I would like to introduce myself first. Um, yeah, actually we don't really... Yeah. So, uh, my name is Frederik Blatorn. I work for Digia in Oslo. And um, I have gotten started with this whole um, free software and Qt in the end through KDE since, uh, yeah, about 2005 I've been active and um, joined Nokia about two and a half years ago and now Digia and uh, actually had the chance uh, to yeah, work on accessibility more by coincidence. So I um, got some research time and started talking to more and more people, um, got involved with the blind community in the free software world a bit so I myself, for example, I'm not quite blind, but I definitely need some assistive technology uh, in form of glasses, so I can use a computer sensibly. Um, yeah, and in my spare time, I'm looking forward to skiing. I like climbing, so Oslo is a great place to be. I can just recommend it. I'm originally German. <laughs> so, yeah, um, today, I would first like to uh, introduce the topic a bit, uh, what is accessibility, and then I would like to give a bit of an overview of what we have on the different platforms, because of course we do care about Windows, Linux, Mac, and nowadays also the mobile platforms, again, uh, Android and iOS. Then um, I'd like to mention a few things that you can do in order to make an application accessible and what tools you can use that will help you with that. Um, yeah, and then summarize a bit. Um, is my voice loud enough? Can you, yeah, okay, perfect. So, let's start with a definition, accessibility. Um, this is just a quote from Wikipedia. The degree to which a product, device, service, or environment is available to as many people as possible. So, it is a very fuzzy term in a way. Um, it just means making it possible that people can use your software. And there are many aspects to accessibility. And I'll not make it less fuzzy in the end. I just showed some different uh, areas where you need to pay attention. Uh, so, yeah, my goal, of course, is to enable people to um, be part of society and nowadays you really need to be online, you need to use computers in order to be part of everyday life, to chat with your friends, to inform yourself. And there was actually a study done by Microsoft and uh, by Forrester actually for Microsoft in 2003. And that showed that roughly 57% of all computer users uh, in the U.S. between 18 and 64 or something like that um, could uh, make use of some form of assistive technology, be it some uh, aid in seeing uh, something that makes it easier to type, or there's many different aspects to it. And then sometimes if you don't only want to be the idealist, there's also uh, legal reasons to uh, implement accessibility. So there's just a few important laws in the US, the first three, and then the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights also here. And you will basically find some administrative thing in every country. So quite often, if you want to sell any software to government, you need to be accessible. And more and more also for the private sector, if you work in a big company, usually the tools to work there have to be accessible. So what do we mean by accessibility here? There's many different things. Um, yeah, for people with bad sight, I mean, just increasing the font size might help your problem. So that's a very easy assistive tool. Go to the system settings and say, I want bigger fonts. I want more contrast, high color contrasts. And then there's things that, um, like virtual keyboards help with different uh, motorical problems. You have screen readers, which I will demonstrate a little later. So for people that are actually blind, you can still use a computer. 
But of course, uh, without the eyes, you need some other form to access the things on screen. Uh, Braille is uh, the picture on the bottom right here. Um, you have a device that gives the Braille font where you can read off the dots. That's similar to a screen reader, but uh, in case you're also deaf, not just blind. Um, then there's uh, speech recognition and other tools that I won't go into too much detail, but uh, mention as an example. So th those things are things we want to enable. And of course, we want to enable them in a way that it is easy for the application developer. So that you can just use the tools right away without um, application developers spending too much effort. One interesting example for people with dyslexia, um, for example, um, font settings, um, there are special fonts. Open Dyslexic is one of those, um, it has a certain gravity, so the letters will actually turn around, which is a problem for people with dyslexia, so P and B tend to end up being the same letter that makes reading very hard. So with this kind of font, uh, some people can use the computer much better, and that's why it's important to actually respect the system settings usually. If you can, do use system colors and fonts. So one thing that is really needed, and that's more for us working on Qt, is to uh, make it work with the system uh, interfaces. So Mac OS ships voice over screen reader. On Linux, we have screen readers on especially Orca, and on Windows, there are several ones. And so I would just like to give a short introduction what's on the platforms. When I started looking into this one and a half years ago, it looked approximately like this. Um, so it's not so easy to get started. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail, but um, there's different accessibility APIs, and the important ones that we care about uh, are listed here. <laughs> too many already. Um, on the, the left column is what we have on Windows. MSAA is Windows since 95, approximately, has slightly evolved since then, but not significantly. iAccessible was similar but uh, with some of the shortcomings fixed and UI automation is what Microsoft currently pitches. Then we have ATSPI on Linux and the Apple Accessibility API. The good thing is you don't need to care. So we have Qt and um, Qt abstracts all of this away so that you can just um, use your application and if you implemented accessibility for one platform, it will work on all platforms, and the hope is that you don't even need to implement anything to make it work. Sometimes we um, show a button on screen, for example, without a label, so maybe just a button with a picture on it, and that's usually fine for sighted people. We get the clue, there's a plus on the button, okay, it's probably add, and the minus on the button, the picture means subtract or something. But of course, that's really hard for blind people because um, the screen reader will only be able to say, here, there's a button, but I can't tell you what it does. So in that case, it's really helpful when you um, use one simple function call, that's uh, QWidget has accessible name. So you can set this name and this will make your application a lot better for some people. And um, that's the easiest means of fixing accessibility, accessible name and description if you use uh, designer. It's simply typing in some short little text. And um, if you use uh, C++, I mean, it's one call trivial. And then the more advanced way of implementing things when you have complex widgets that, for example, um, I will show a slider example later that has a different value that can be changed. Um, you can uh, implement Q accessible interface, and that's something we really reworked in Qt5. It's one of the things that has been improved tremendously in Qt5, so that's, <laughs> for me, a good selling point of Qt5 if you care about uh, accessibility. 
We did make many improvements Qt 4.8, but at some point we um, couldn't change the API, of course, so there are some things we simply couldn't fix uh, with a reasonable amount of time and effort, especially with Qt 5 around the corner. And then we actually have Qt Quick um, pretty much working. So what you need is nothing, basically. You need uh, Qt, and um, on Linux with Qt 4.8, you also need a plugin. By now, pretty much all app, uh, distributions ship this plugin. It's called Qt ATSPI. Some spell it with the hyphen, some without. And then you're good to go. So in order to improve your application, the first things you should actually check taking a step back is um, to simply see if you respect the system colors or if not, if you offer enough contrast, for example, that helps many people, if it's possible to increase the contrast. The same goes for fonts. Like mentioned before, is it possible to set custom fonts? That helps a lot. And try using your application with a keyboard only. That's actually quite the challenge sometimes. Try using the tab key because that's how a blind person would explore your application. Pressing tab, seeing, okay, there's a button that does this, okay, there's something where I can enter text and so on. And just check if you can use it without uh, using the mouse. That's a, quite a good test and it will also improve the uh, usability for people that do like to use the keyboard more than the mouse. And so after these easy fixes, I would like to show a demonstration where it actually is important to do what I just mentioned. Uh, so let me change to a virtual machine. I'm, I tried coding on Mac. I actually prefer it on Linux. Um, so. I will share my screen with you, hopefully. Where is it? There. No. Uh, okay. So I would like to show an easy demo that is um, actually an example we ship with Qt. It's the calculator that you can find uh, with QWidget also. It's, uh, I can quickly run it. Uh, so it's this simple application. Um, maybe I should minimize the other windows so it's easier to see. It just shows a calculator UI, nothing else. And now I would like to show you how it is to use it with a screen reader, just so you get an impression. Uh, So on Linux, you have the Orca screen reader, and I can show you the Mac uh, screen reader at the end of the presentation. Um, and maybe I should switch on the sound. So yeah, we sadly don't have a proper sound system here. I hope we can do make do with this. So. Okay, the quality is rather horrendous, um, but I guess you can hear it. Um, so, in order to explore this application, what I will literally do is really press the tab key. And the uh, screen reader will tell me, yes, there's a button, and this is the label. So, usually you want the um, label like clear first, so when you get used to an application, that you can quickly navigate through it. Uh, and when I was looking at this example just to see how it worked, there was one funny detail. So the screen reader actually tries to help me by saying Mr. instead of MR. And this is, I think it's great, so that's why I want to leave it in this example, so that I can always chuckle when it happens. But actually, if you do a real application, you maybe want to improve it there. And so um, I thought we could quickly fix this. So I can, oh, I can just switch it off there. 
So I have the, uh, yeah. The example is just one file, basically. Um, well, two files. The buttons uh, are a small Q widget subclass. They have their custom button, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, so now, is it is the font big enough? I can maybe increase it a little. So. I have this button here that is the read memory button. And like I mentioned before, the way to fix this is to set a custom accessible name. Read memory button, accessible, uh, sorry, set. And it will be read memory instead of our MR. And then I can build and run it again. And switch on the sound, maybe. So when I now go to the MR push button, so this application is now fixed. <laughs> and now it's boring. So, this was the first example where with an effort of almost no time you can really um, improve the situation quite a bit. I'll try to go back to my slides. Uh, Okay. okay, so just to reiterate, use this set accessible name. And then um, the next one is a bit more involved. If I have a custom widget, then of course Qt can't by divination know what it is, what it, the semantics are. So I need to actually tell, okay, this widget um, has a certain role. That is what we usually use, like a button will always be something clickable and um, uh, uh, yeah, an editable, editable text, text is something where you probably can type in text and so on. So I can actually give the system all the information. Um, so what is important is the name, uh, the description, which is a bit more elaborate. So the name could be usually the label that a sighted person, person sees. Description can be a bit more elaborate when it's hard to place it in context because we use geometrical information to get information about, say, the button, where it is. If it's next to a list, then it probably uh, does something with the list and so on. And that's information you can uh, put in the description. The role and state are what functionality, what type of widget this is, and the state is if it's currently focused or enabled and so on. Generally, you don't have to do too much to get this working. And I would like to show another sh small example of how to do that. So this is inspired by a KDE widget, which is the rating stars. They have a nice little thing where you can just say, I like this thing, click four stars, five stars, or I don't like it, give it no star. And of course, that's not accessible out of the box because we don't know about it in Qt. And I took this widget and copied it over. Um, no. Sorry for the switching back and forth. So there we go. And see if I can run it. So the first thing I had to do was actually implement keyboard handling. That was reasonably easy. I just uh, say it handles the tab key. And then uh, I can press the left and right arrow key instead of just the mouse. If I move the mouse over it, I can see that um, 
there's a highlight where I would uh, rate if I click now, so I can change the stars by clicking, or I press left and right and can change the rating this way. Simple, straightforward, uh, small addition. Um, so then the question is, how can I now get this thing to... Do you have a question? To Um, yeah, actually, um, it's a question of um, the screen reader or the tools you're using. So what we do in Qt is um, make it possible to use the applications on different platforms. And in the end, the screen reader is platform specific. Oh, yeah, and the question was uh, if it was a touch screen, sorry. Um, so then... Uh, in the end, we, we are not the ones implementing the platform and the accessibility on the platform. So if we were to go on a new platform, we would, of course, integrate with the platform screen reader that has to solve uh, this kind of issue. And it knows about the geometry of the widget and such. So it could um, give haptical feedback when you move over it. Okay, but so now let's make this example accessible again, um, a bit more involved, but not impossible. Um, so what I need to do now is subclass Q, um, Q accessible interface. Mm. So what I will do, I just implement it inside of the normal K rating widget is the class from KDE. So I'll just implement this small class in the CPP file here. Um, I will include Q accessible widget. Q accessible widget is actually a helper class that is derived from Q accessible interface to make it convenient, more convenient by already implementing a few functions for us. So it's easier to write this for custom widget. So I just call it accessible rating widget, and this is a public. Um, Q accessible widget. So in this class, I um, can implement different properties for this um, widget, in this case, the stars. And I need a constructor um, taking the K rating widget. And I'll simply pass on the widget to the uh, constructor of Q accessible widget. So, um, so far I haven't really uh, done anything, but let's. Um, then I need one helper function to tell the accessibility system about this new uh, class, because right now, yeah, it's just a class floating around. So I need a factory function. Mm. And that one gets a Q string as parameter, which just is uh, the class name for which we uh, need an accessible, usually called key, and the object for which we try to um, instantiate an accessible. And what we'll actually do is try to use Q object cast if that successfully casts uh, the Q object to um, the rating widget, then I know I'm good and I will return an instance of the accessible rating widget. Otherwise, I will just return null and
Sorry? Sorry? Oh, oh, yeah. Thanks. Excellent. Um, object. Coding on stage is always fun. So, mm, So I use so QObject cast, cast to see if I have a k-rating widget of the object. No, I can't use this keyboard standing here. Um, and if that is successful, I will return the rating widget and um, accessible. And the last thing, I actually need to install this factory function. And for that, I use uh, Q accessible. Somehow my auto completion is completely broken just when you learn to rely on it. Um, so, accessible factory. And I just take uh, the address of this factory function, pass it in, and then I am done. Let's see if it compiles. So, this is the basic infrastructure. Now I. Um, yeah, we can ignore the key parameter. Now I have the infrastructure in place to give more information. Right now it's uh, still rather boring because my accessible will show up but it doesn't do anything. Um, so I can re-implement one function that is the text function. And it actually gets one parameter that is Q accessible. Whoops. The kind of, the kind of text, text. Uh, and this is something which I recommend looking up in the documentation uh, in the end. But just to give a small example, um, so if the text is the name, Q accessible name, then we return and of course, this should be localized. Um, otherwise, we return just what the superclass would do, Q accessible widget. <laughs> Thank you, excellent. So. Um, Okay. okay. Of course. So now I have actually the same demo as before, and I can um, use my screen reader, or alternatively, I can use a different tool to just look at the hierarchy of objects, which is sometimes better for debugging purposes. So there's on Linux one tool called Exerciser. I'll give a list of tools at the end. Uh, but this is right now what's nice to use. Um, and that shows me my calculator application, uh, and it shows the rating widget demo here. So it will show all the different applications that are running. And I can see I have here um, actually the um, le text label on top, and I have something which is the rating widget which actually um, just exists as object. Because, yeah, we haven't um, said the type of it yet. So um, I can give it the role, which is Q accessible slider, for example, which is the closest. So usually when I uh, implement a new widget, I choose one role that is close to what I want. And then I'm curious if it works now. Yeah, 
And now I have a slider here. So where I had um, yeah, something yeah. unknown before, I uh, have um, this noun as a value um, slider now. And um, actually, in order to get it working nicely, I also need to implement the value interface. I've done that already, and it's implementing five functions. So that's not so exciting, so I'll just uh, quickly Check it out. Um, so what I need to do then is um, to um, give the implementation for a few functions. You can see it there. Um, there's a current value and set current value, and this is done by uh, subclassing one more interface class. And then I can actually show you this to you with the screen reader. Oops. Hello. So now I'm on the hello label, and if I tap, I tap. So now I have it implemented by just subclassing uh, one interface class and uh, implementing the corresponding functionality. So this is when you want advanced uh, accessibility, let's say. And, and so this was all, all a bit widget centric and it works nicely. Um, so one question was, uh, how do we do this with QML? And how many of you have actually used uh, Qt Quick before? <laughs> nah, a few, okay. So um, because the question is if we can actually make it convenient there, if we need to do big trouble, uh, implement lots of things. So the first thing I did was actually um, implement this rating widget in QML. So that is, um, yeah, um, just a focus scope, so something that can get the keyboard uh, focus. And I just handle the keys, and I have my mouse area to get the mouse behavior and so on. And so I can run this. Um, I wrote a small example, which just shows the same in QML. You won't even see a big difference. Let's see if it works. It's uh, quite slow in the virtual machine. Oh, come on. Um, so in theory, I have the same here done in QML. <laughs> it just doesn't really like me. Mm. Okay. okay. It did work earlier today. <laughs> Give it one more chance, otherwise we'll just move on. Okay, mystery. Mm. But so yes, I'm not a designer, but I just used the same pix map um, and copied it over. I can now here also click to change the rating, or I can um, use the tab key to move the rating around. Of course, it should also have a bit more visual halo to say I'm currently on this widget. Mm. So, yeah. Basically, we're set up. I have the widget, which um, is a lot less code than um, what it was in C++. And accessibility-wise, I actually already um, used the desktop components for the text field. So that one just works because we could uh, build it in there. And so if you start reusing components, it's quite easy to get this working again. And now I have um, one property in there that is value and basically all I need to do is expose this value property to the uh, interface. And um, if you know Qt Quick, um, you know there's attached properties and there's one property called accessible. And um, 
There we can there set the role. the role, and the role will be accessible. Let's see if I can do it without tables. And accessible slider, just like before. And with this one line, QML will actually expect that you have a property value, and maximum value, and minimum value. If not, it assumes these to be zero, so then it doesn't quite work, but we're actually done implementing accessibility for this widget with uh, just one line. And um, we can see if it works. Oh yeah, start orca again. And in order to make uh, this work, we use properties, we get the notification that the value changed, and we can just uh, yeah, use the API as before, but it's much simply simpler for the application developer. So um, I was really doubtful when I was preparing the example that I would get it to work, and then I was a bit blown away that it was actually this easy and uh, working so nicely. So... Mm, Oh, and I wish this thing would uh, know where we are. Uh, there we go. So, um, yes, the QML demo is just one line, and it's uh, accessible, it's working. So what you do there is just set this accessible.role uh, and accessible.name optionally, and uh, you're usually done. Um, um, now, I would now just, I just like, like to, to give a quick overview of the tools you can use in order to test this on uh, the different platforms. So, on the Mac, uh, you have VoiceOver, which is the screen reader, um, which I can actually quickly show because it's always nicer to see things. Um, let's see. So, oh, uh -huh. uh -huh. I have this thing there. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I was going to show the same running on Mac, the demo, and it is actually not 100% complete there, but I can start VoiceOver. Ah, uh, and it does not quite. So. So VoiceOver has this virtual key cursor which one can move around and actually it has a nice dis it has a it has a nice uh, display of what it's currently saying but that's on my screen not on the other one um, so basically we uh, get the same on Mac for free as expected um, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um, so on the Mac, uh, VoiceOver, as you just saw, it has this text display, which is quite helpful when you're debugging. Or um, there's Accessibility Inspector, which is a tool that um, shows you what's currently under the mouse, what properties it has. And here, for example, it tells me I, on the bottom that I didn't implement a property correctly. So that's something where you can yell at me that our accessibility on Mac is not quite perfect yet. Um, then there's the Accessibility Verifier on Mac, which is a tool that just goes through all the objects and sees if they're implemented correctly. And that's, that's the that's tools that Apple, Apple give you, give gives you, and they are actually working quite nicely. Then we have on Windows, NVDA is the um, standard open source screen reader, which you can use for testing without any big trouble. There's also um, 
a screen reader that screen reader comes shipped, shipped with uh, Windows 7 and onwards, but that one is very simplistic, and as far as I know, people don't really use it. So NVDA is an option, and then there's the proprietary products such as Windows Eyes and um, um, JAWS, but those are rather pricey. So um, if you're just trying an application, it's probably not worth investing around $1,000 or so for an application to test. Um, It is very simplistic in that it um, doesn't have good support for tables. It, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not so much working on Windows, so um, I don't know all the details as well, but it's, um, yeah, it has the most basic functionality. It will read you out a button, but um, somehow it seems that much functionality is missing, and I think it also doesn't work as good with web browsers, for example. So, yes, JAWS is the one that is from Freedom Scientific, and it's a bit on the expensive side, uh, but yes, it's uh, probably what, if you, if you really want to give the proper support, then maybe it's worth investing in uh, JAWS, for example. Mm. When there's Ec Explorer um, by Microsoft that shows you kind of a hierarchy of your widgets and you can use it for debugging, but it's uh, rather old and um, maybe hard to find. There's Accessibility Probe by IBM, which is more focused on iAccessible 2. Um, something to look into. You have Inspect, uh, which is another Microsoft tool, and um, yeah, you can also see the hierarchy, and this one works with UI automation, but not I accessible at the moment, I accessible too. So that is a bit tricky because at the moment Qt implements I accessible too, but not um, UI automation. And then on Linux, you just saw it, um, Orca is the screen reader, just a small panel. And Exerciser is um, the tool I use to see the tree. That's quite helpful. You can see, okay, here's the calculator and it has these buttons in there. And then um, a very new tool actually, um, written by Sebastian Sauer and me at a, um, yeah, partially at a KDE Sprint in Switzerland in Randa. So currently it's just randomly called Randomizer, which is really not a, the best title. Um, but this is a pure Qt tool that we use for debugging. And um, so it might actually be an option to look into that one too. Yeah. Yeah. Then I'd like to just summarize. I encourage you to check your application. Um, have a look, check out that the colors work if you change to a different color theme, dark color themes, and so on. Check that the fonts work sensibly. Try this keyboard navigation thing. It's sometimes fun and you will discover some ways to actually improve your user interface when doing this. And then try running it with a screen reader as an advanced uh, fun exercise. <laughs> um, we have a few things in Qt which are not quite uh, where they should be yet. Um, compared to one and a half years ago, I'm really proud that um, we got most things working nowadays, especially with Qt 5. But Qt Quick still has a few lacking corners. For example, um, lists are not done good enough yet to be um, really working nicely, and the flickable is a bit of a research topic. And then we have um, WebKit, which currently doesn't have an implementation. I started working on a kind of proof of concept patch, but it needs uh, quite a bit more work to actually make it in. Yeah. That's it. Thanks a lot for attending and being interested. Thanks.